What is good? Welcome to another episode of the Behind the Wheel Podcast. I'm Scott from Koenig, Rich from Koenig. We're here for another glorious podcast on this beautiful Wheel Wednesday. Yeah, how you doing, Scott? <laughs> I'm doing good. Uh, so let's let's get right into our topic, right? Mm -hmm. So so we're look, EV is, electric vehicles are certainly coming hard and fast. Um, you know, uh, pause. Uh, there's also this <laughs> other thing where. Um, we're starting to see so many more renderings for vehicles that were traditional pedigree vehicles, right? Like mm -hmm. we see, we saw lately that we saw the Charger. Uh, obviously, we, you know, Mach E right. Mustangs. Mm -hmm. We've seen F 150 Lightnings. We've seen so, so many vehicles now as they make the jump from, you know, internal combustion engine to electric vehicle we've we've watched their platforms change and and progress we've watched their 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 platforms you know in some ways they're they're better in other ways maybe not so much to especially to an enthusiast right yeah, yeah. but 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 what we you know what we're what we're thinking is like how does this ev standard how does this ev um change change the vehicles and i think the most startling thing that they brought this up to when we were talking about it mm -hmm. is just the idea that like that new charger i mean i really think that charger is such a good example right the charger if you haven't seen it um you know i think max will probably do uh get some stuff in while while we're talking here but mm -hmm. if you haven't seen it it is i mean i think externally the car looks phenomenal it does you know what I mean? It has all the right cues. <clears throat> and I, I think that when you think about what what a car could look like if the future was here but still retain the appearance of a car, not a flying spaceship, mm -hmm. I think this rendering and, and this vehicle, this concept vehicle, it does it for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some other things as EVs keep uh kind of progressing into every single manufacturer's arsenal that we're going to see and it leaves some questions in my mind about well what is going to be different mm -hmm. right like for example we know hyundai right to have a certain position in the market yep does that mean that all of the ev <clears throat> Hyundai's are going to change like is the interior of those vehicles going to become so much more than it was are there going to be other features and amenities are there going to be th other options that will become standard on these vehicles that maybe just because a vehicle is electric will will change the whole game and change the playing field for a lot of these vehicles right I, I mean i think when you look at a brand like hyundai uh, a little more of a you know affordable brand something like right. that and then when they want to make their uh electric lineups which they, they have a bunch of cars mm -hmm. um you know will the features that they put into their electric vehicles how is that going to compare or contrast to their regular cars yeah well you know and, and and let's even go one step further what happens when their 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 fleet is basically all electric mm -hmm. I, you know, I, there. And, and to kind of wind this back just a, just a hair I, you know the the thing that i can't keep up with is that I, i've been in a fair share now of electric vehicles especially ones that came from uh you know from traditional manufacturers right mm -hmm. like the hyundai's like you know they have ionics and they have yep. some other vehicles and what's uh what's starting to happen is the interiors and the amenities and you know like everything's modernizing much faster than the other than the tr traditional internal combustion engine vehicles and i don't i think that's just because they're like hey look they've taken on this premise of and and don't get me wrong vehicle manufacturers they probably start five years before these vehicles have come out to develop these cars mm -hmm. right but i think they figured well if we're going electric we, we have to make it 
like this wave of the future. So, so their interiors are drastically different than 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 things. We're seeing more amenities. We're seeing more standard options and features. And um, and you know, we've seen this in concept cars. So, is that going to be the norm? Like, are is there going to be a playing field? Is it going to be just as nice riding in a Hyundai as it is maybe in a Mercedes? It's hard to say because uh, you know. With the luxury car, you expect to have all the greatest features, materials, stuff like that. Just right. kind of a, you know, uh, really comfortable overall, you know, car. Right. And, and when you start going into some of these new EV cars, if they're not doing engineering expenses on, uh, you know, combustion engine design, stuff like that, they have more resources to put towards features, interior yeah, I mean, it's an interesting point. You know, I know that so many people, and, I, and I'm sure that this way, you know, far outweighs um, price tag wise, but so many people have been very on the on the pricing side saying, well, these electric vehicles are expensive, you're not going to get your money back, mm -hmm. this, that, the other thing, takes X amount of years. My, my question that even kind of reflects to myself is that inherently, and I'll go out on a limb and say this, Vehicles that the electric vehicles for the OEs to me, if I'm an OE, like I'm super excited about electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. There's just not much going on there. Like engineering wise, the ability to not have to, we're at the end and the edge of what the internal combustion engine is capable of as far as its efficiency. Like we've, 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 walk down this this path i'm not talking about the the addition of adding other systems like adding hybrid systems we're talking about the internal combustion engine we have done probably everything we really can in a milestone feature to get that you know that whole design as efficient as possible we we can't go too much further they have put so many systems. There are so many systems and so many complicated pieces and moving pieces for an internal combustion engine that just won't ne be needed with an electric vehicle. It literally is like you're talking about, you know, car companies able to just drop these electric motors in, set their power, tr you know, set their power levels, all the low, um, you know, low amps uh, and their low side uh, CAN bus circuits and stuff like that that run all your accessories inside the car completely independent so like man like this is it's if i'm an o if i'm an oe i'm super happy about ev it just made my life a lot easier i don't have to worry about the emission standards and all this stuff that they get choked up in mm -hmm. so <clears throat> there's got there's a cost savings there we've seen ford lately they let i think three thousand people go white white collar because they don't need them to organize these systems as they build future vehicles right so you know the vehicles may come down in price or become much more affordable in other ways like maybe not necessarily cost the uh, you know but maybe it will be in you know the the overall manufacturer savings for the production of these vehicles so what is it but, but what does it look like like we're we're it's so different so now do they put extra time and effort into um, into developing other amenities and features for these cars? That seems to be what they're doing. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of these EV brands have, you know, they showcase all these crazy features that the cars will have, whether it's, you know, self-driving or stuff like that. But, Scott, let me ask a question to you would be that, w would you feel then that a combustion engine cars have reached their limit in terms of stuff like horsepower and EPA efficiency and stuff like that without the help of a... a electric motor um uh, listen i to, think to their highest degrees yeah so I, I look i don't know i don't know about from a power perspective right because mm -hmm. i think that we have certainly had uh plenty of oes that have produced very very high performance vehicles and high horsepower cars out of the turtle combustion engine i love the ice and uh and mm -hmm. i personally think that you know that the, the power wise like you know you could potentially make the sky the limit. But when it comes down to manufacturing a vehicle, the complexity of an internal combustion engine, to me, is far reduced when you go to an electric vehicle. Yep. Like, there's just not... 
you don't have the moving pieces you don't have gas tanks you don't have you know what i mean like there's so many things you just maintenance don't have maintenance is different yeah maintenance is mm-hmm. different you don't have to so and 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 so that, you know that's a whole other story like what happens with some of these you know car companies and people that are like what's the maintenance of like you only need two guys one guy mm-hmm. out of instead of 10 to to service these vehicles i don't know but but what do you think what do you so so they're putting all these amenities into these cars you know it really starts to blur the line between what is considered luxury mm-hmm. and what isn't, right? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think there's a lot of people that would consider Tesla a luxury, bl- you know, brand, which they're not. Um, right. I think a lot of people might have that confused just by looks and features alone and price and price. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that that raises. So here's a, here's one for you. Yeah. If if you look at say Nissan, if you do their yep. sedans, yep. Say you go Versa, Sentra. Ultima, Maxima. Okay. Right. Yep. Their their entry level EV car or their only EV car, I think, is the Nissan Leaf, and that right. com- that comes in at like thirty thousand dollars. It's a it's a or, is that cheap? Or, yeah, it's a okay. it's a relatively inexpensive EV car, but I'm sure the you know current prices are higher than that. Right. But if they wanted to introduce say a mid level or high trim EV sedan as opposed to the Leaf, you know, uh, w- where are you looking then? They, all of a sudden, if they want to make a high-end sedan that's EV and yeah. uh, you know a better version of the Leaf, yeah. we're going to be sitting what forty-five, fifty thousand dollars. Well, but I, you know, and I, and I, I think that we're we're just at that intro stage where things are are just slightly too complicated. Like people, mm-hmm. when 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 these manufacturers are running to do EVs, I think they're just really at that at edge where they're doing their best to make a splash when they un- when they release these cars because they don't want them to flop. Right. But I don't think it's going to stay like that forever. Like, in other words, I do believe personally that, you know, your Hyundai vehicles will have a Hyundai price point and a Hyundai, uh, you know, option package that's that's respective. And then um, and I and I think that when it comes down to Mercedes, you're going to see them be every bit of the luxury vehicle they are, but they'll just be electric. Like uh, BMW did this this really great job. I, I don't know if anybody's really been paying attention to that, but but what BMW did was, without really much hype, without a lot of noise or anything like that, they released basically every model that they make almost an electric. Mm-hmm. You could see them. It, you'll sometimes see like a three series or a four series cruising around, maybe even a five series, and you think, oh well, that's a cool three series or five series. And then you look, and it doesn't say, you know, um, four forty. It says i four. Mm-hmm. Right, like it says I four on it. So, what happened there? Right, like, are we already know that that a few, um, what is it, a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago, um, BMW put out this thing about how they were going to start charge, they, like they were going to start charging for subscription features yep. on their cars. So, so look, it's arguably that your vehicle will come with more things than. Uh, then you'll have in your disposal to use unless you want to pay an additional monthly uh, fee to have them. Right. Is it conceivable that we will see the same thing with power? Uh, you could, Yeah, I think you can right. make that assumption. Yeah. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, so like what's the difference? Is it really the motors? I, I think in some cases it is. We've seen in the Tesla, they have a good model and some of the cars come with uh you know obviously one motor some come with dual motors right. um but and even in even the single motors there's obviously a power output that they contribute to the amount of battery range that they have long-term battery cars can have a, a faster power option than standard battery range cars mm-hmm. so uh, you know i suspect that obviously all of those things will kind of carry through a little bit and as battery technology gets better so will the ranges and, and different output. power outputs mm-hmm. but but then comes this other thing. At what point are we going to be limited and they're going to really basically say, well, you can have all this power, but your acceleration will be capped here. The, yeah, that's that's going to be incoming. Or, you know, you've said it before, Scott, like the the amount of power that the electric vehicles are going to start yeah. outputting are going to kind of exceed the current automobile market, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's and, and you know, especially with the tires, like, mm-hmm, yeah, it's you're gonna get to a point where some of these cars are gonna be able to out accelerate and out stop, um, maybe not so much stop, but out accelerate mm-hmm. the current tire 
um, you know, kind of technology that's there. And in which case, you know, what are we talking about? They're going to have to limit this stuff for safety. Yep. So then brings up this other thing. If they're going to limit that, those cars for safety, do they limit other things as well? Yeah, I think they're going to. I mean, it's it's going to be like this car can go to, you know, what, 0 to 120 in four seconds. That's crazy. But, but <laughs> you know, when they start going crazy numbers, but it's going to be yeah. capped off at 110 miles per hour. It could, but right. you can't. So the question is, at any time, couldn't these manufacturers, even in this current state, have limited how fast a vehicle could go? Yeah, of course. So So why now? Why now with electric? There's got to be something to they're worried about burning out battery ranges or there or or something with the motors that when you get up to that, it, it's not about the acceleration. It's all about, you know, when you prolong that type of speed that it either depletes the, the batteries very quickly or you're in a situation where um, they're worried about overheating or burning out motors. There's got to be something else to it, right? Yep. I don't know what it is. I, me either. <laughs> me either. I, I just, like, I, I think about, you know, I think about the departure of what we have here. Like, we have computers, in, more computers in cars right now than ever before. There's no reason that a manufacturer couldn't have said, basically, like, hey, we'll allow you to go super fast right up until 75 miles an hour, and then the car won't go over 75 miles an hour. So, like, why are we seeing some of these EVs get restricted at 106 miles an hour? Well, it mainly for safety, um, maybe because the power is, you know, easily accessible. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I know. It's kind of crazy. I, I think I think the question really here is, though, like, what do you think? Like, if you're if you're listening to this, you know, make sure you, you know, com give your comments. But what happens with these EV vehicles? Are we going to see a sustained period of increased creature comforts amenities etc or is this just part of the initial intro and then eventually what's going to happen is vehicles will settle in to kind of being in a very similar uh type of market position as they are now mm -hmm. but but they'll have some things that obviously you'll need i, I mean i personally think that's going to be the way it is yeah i mean i think i would say so too right like because uh, because you're not gonna have a, a brand like hyundai that's gonna want to have every car be 60 grand or no. you know obviously things like but if they were to stagger their electric line up right now it would be you know getting close to something like that if yeah. they wanted to make different tiers of a you know entry mid high right. tier. well it's gonna happen i mean yeah. like you have these cars like i i personally like you know i think bmw did it the way that i expected the most which is not too much fuss like Yes, they became electric, but they didn't really harp on it. They were mm -hmm. kind of like, well, yeah, they're, they're electric, but, you know, you still have the same performance, same options, same thing. Like, everything is the same. Right. But it happens to be electrical. Like, you know, They also did electric. a pretty good job on the looks, too. If you if you like BMWs, yeah. it kind of just blends right in. Well, because yeah. I, but I think that that's the point. Like, yeah. you can look at those cars and, and you could say, well, no, they're that's just a 4 Series, mm -hmm. right? But no, it's an i4. Right. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure about that XI or the IX or whatever that is. That's a little wacky. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, when we start talking about M performance, that's a good one, right? You see two options. They have the i4 uh, E-Drive 40, and then they have the uh, um, the i4 M M50. 50. Yep. And the M50 is their M-Spec car. But you can look at the price there. That's not far off from where you would buy you know uh like you know kind of i don't want to say an m5 i mean m2 like a, maybe like an m like you know kind of like a a, a high-end four series mm -hmm. not a higher you know but like like a loaded up four series that's kind of right where you are so we're seeing the same brakes we're seeing you know color options we're seeing a car that resembles a car not a spaceship no wings no ailerons nothing that would make the thing like it's going to take flight because it has a battery in it right um no crazy futuristic cyber truck look nope <laughs> I, I mean i think that some of these companies need to get a little bit toned down on their wheel choices i think they look kind of hideous but mm -hmm. um but aside from that it's an electric car has similar power I wonder what the power is on this go to this uh go to the fe specs and features down but let's see all right so let's see so they're they're equi uh, equating this to a 536 horsepower car zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds up to 270 miles in range this is interesting to me let me tell you why they gave you a good number of, of horsepower 
something that you would that i that i know that there is no force uh, internal combustion engine four series that you can buy making that kind of horsepower but well, that you could buy from the dealership that comes with 530 horsepower so we're getting more acceleration no problem mm -hmm. there's your electric equivalent uh 3.7 seconds extremely re respectable um i would imagine that the engine has more capability the engine the motor, motor <laughs> has more capability in it um and that's where the aftermarket i think is really going to start to come into play eventually range up to 270 miles so we modest. know what we're working with mm -hmm. yeah modest but but probably right on par with um with what you would get in a gas in, in your gasoline uh four series now yeah right mm -hmm. like those cars like i like i know my dad has one uh shout out to my dad shout out to my <laughs> sister who for some reason told me i had to give her a shout out which is like weird because like this is not my podcast, um, <laughs> but like, but like, uh, you know, I look at that car and I know that like, yeah, he could, he could drive it on the highway and get 25, you know, to, to, to the gallon. Mm -hmm. Um, but most likely he's going to be doing combined of about 18. Yep. Right. So I could see where those specs come into play. So what they've chosen to do is they've chosen to continue on the legacy of what maybe an imp improving, but what. A, a traditional car that you're used to would feel like the price is there. They've done this whole thing. I mean, it's very, very interesting because I think you have two takes right now. You're going to have the wild stuff like the Rivians and the stuff that have really never been out yet. Yep. You have Teslas, which is in their own lane to me. Um, you're going to have some other electric vehicle companies. I think you're going to come out with some more modest things, but then you're going to have other car companies. You're going to have to figure out which direction they want to go. Do they, do they keep improving and make every electric vehicle they come out look like, you know, oohs and ahs? Mm -hmm. Or is it become kind of the only thing that really is different here is, you know. Right. I, I think BMW, I think Ford with the Lightning really yep. hit it on the head. I mean, they look like, you know, the cars that win over their, their consumers, you know. Yeah. So I think something like that is always good. And, and when they go to more general OE makers and stuff like that, and they start implementing their kind of more blended in electric vehicles i think yeah. they're gonna get good responses yeah it's interesting it, you know it's interesting and like and like you said like you know when you when you looked at some of these things like like the charger and you looked at the interior the interior is incredible it is incredible right so like you and your point your point to me was hey like so what does that mean does that mean that like luxury vehicles it's going to be like like how are they going to top this how are right. how are these cars going to compete against each other when they're throwing the best of the best at something just because it's electric yeah i mean a question that i kind of you know came to my head was uh you know what's more luxurious is it having really fine materials and a nice space to be in or having tons of amenities and features and stuff i mean the rivian r1 which i showed you that you can get a full kitchen in it i mean yeah that I mean, to me, that's luxurious. I mean, you could, you oh, could, ha you, I mean, that's a luxury to me. You get, where do they stuff, which compartment do they stuff the chef in? <laughs> well, that's when you uh, go to YouTube. But, <laughs> I like, I, you know, I, but you know, look, even the Rivian stuff, it looks like a standard vehicle, mm -hmm. right? It, it, it's definitely modernized. They definitely have more creature comforts and stuff, but I think that's the development of the car. Like Tesla did the same thing. They have a lot of little trick niche things. Um, this is great. You can put your kids probably back in. <laughs> but like, but like, I you, I you know, I think about this stuff, and I, and I think that this is this is going to be truly a interesting game because, like, when I look at the Rivian, is that really a price point thing? Like, the Rivian is way more expensive mm -hmm. than 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 like your regular Hyundai Ionic. Right, but they like, but they don't market themselves as a luxury brand either. They're they're about like like adventure and stuff like that, and like you know, right. capability a sense. And I would argue that I don't I don't look at that vehicle and I think luxury. Yeah, right. Like I I do look at it as a regular vehicle platform, man. But I'll tell you though, you know, throwing down mid seventies for well, you know, that's probably not that far either. There's really not too many pickup trucks that you can get for under sixty thousand dollars anymore either. Yeah. So I don't know. Interesting, but. But there's a thought there. You know, I'm interested to see what, what some of you think out there. So if you uh, are, you know, are listening on iTunes, uh, iHeartMedia, Spotify, Stitcher, you know, Google Play, all that stuff, um, go over to YouTube, throw your comments in. Let us know, 
you know, what do you think, where do you think the evolution of electric vehicles is going to be, especially when it starts to come down to creature comforts, like kind of positioning, like, are you going to, are we going to see the same cars? Like, does it feel like everything else is kind of borderline the same with the exception of, you know, you don't have to go to the gas station anymore. You have to plug into your wall outlet and hope you don't overload your circuits and blow your house apart trying to charge a car. Yeah. I mean, that, that itself is also, uh, you know, something they must be struggling with. I mean, people who don't have their own homes or, you know, rent right. or rent or live in an apartment or something like that. Right. They, they don't even have the option to do this. Right. So like, what about people that live in their car? Is that not a thing anymore? <laughs> yeah, I guess like, not. So like, right. Like, like, what do you have to do? You have to like, you try have to, to find, own, own so a now, house. <laughs> yeah. So now nobody's going to be siphoning gas. They're going to be trying to like plug into other people's houses and stuff. Yeah. 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 Right. That's kind of wild. So. so I don't know. What do you think? Any, anything else you want to you want to add to this topic no i think i think we kind of hit upon our points here yeah that's that's our thoughts so yeah. let us know what your thoughts are that's uh it's interesting um real quick before we head out of here uh if you are not subscribed to our youtube channel Coney wheels usa make sure you get subscribed because that's where we do a lot of our wheel giveaways we've talked about this all the time we've done five this year you want to see some more that's how we're going to be able to uh kind of run those things if you're not subscribed to youtube you will miss them i promise you also we put up a piece of content on friday uh this friday i believe we're doing an faq on lug nuts now i will caution you for the people that think that oh that's gonna be boring i'm gonna skip it don't because i have been uh seeing more comments on our faq and some of our educational stuff than i believe i have seen uh on most of our content and i think it's because there is a lot of practical value and there's a lot of things that you know even recording here like we'll be recording whether it be max or Luis or you like sometimes like i'll even rattle off something to answer a question and you'll be like oh i didn't even know that like mm -hmm. they're just random things so um, make sure that you are, you know, in the loop for that stuff. We put up a piece of content on Friday and I believe Max has been trying to get him up around five o'clock or so, uh, Eastern time. Um, so make sure you, you head over there, uh, check it out. Make sure you're subscribed and click that notification bell. Also, last thing, don't forget that we go live, uh, on Instagram and Facebook right before this, uh, every Wednesday, every wheel Wednesday, every at wheel 2 PM Eastern, where we answer your questions. Q&A live, you come in, you hang out with us, doing it for a few years now. It's a good place for you to know where we're gonna be every week, answer your questions. You can get anything you want answered. Uh, sometimes we drop some cool hidden gems on there and some interesting stuff and that's really all I got for you. Listen, take care of yourself, have a good week. Uh, do some cool car stuff, you're running out of summer. We will talk to you soon. Take care. <laughs>